There don't seem to be that many romantic comedies around these days. I wondered um, what your take on that was, um, why you think that is, and what makes um, that awkward moment stand apart in the, this genre? Well, you know, I think there aren't that many romantic comedies these days because um, it's an interesting, and it's sort of this catch-22, that the familiarity of the storyline, what's supposed to happen in a romantic comedy. You know, you, you make a romantic comedy, you show it to people, they're like, ah, I don't like it because it's so predictable and I, I know it was going to happen and I totally guessed it and they have to end up together, or, you know, and, and, and then if you make a romantic comedy and you don't do that, they're like, well, it didn't do any of the things that I wanted it to. It didn't fulfill me and I, I wanted it to do that and fulfill all the stereotypes. So it's a no-win situation. And I feel like if you take, and this is, this is a slightly long answer, but... If you look at Romeo and Juliet, right, which is the first sort of romantic comedy, originally written as a comedy, by the way, and uh, the stakes were very real. It's two families that hate each other, right? And you go, okay, I get it. Like, those stakes were real. Now, we've exhausted all the possibilities. So you have, like, you know, an agoraphobe and, like, you know, a kayak constructor, and they can't be in a relationship because no one can go outside, right? And you're like, that's not a real thing. So I, I think you've, you've run the gamut of, like, what's possible. So... The second part of your question is, I wanted to see a romantic comedy from the guy's perspective, because that's underrepresented and sort of a spin on the genre. And what were some of the inspirations? Was there some personal experience in there? And there's also some Shakespeare again, wasn't there? <laughs> there is, yeah, there, there, there really is. There's uh, Love's Labor's Lost, which was a big influence on, on the sort of uh, narrative framework of the movie, the three guys making a deal to stay single. Um, and uh, th there is a, you know, a bunch of my own experience in the movie. I, I got out of college, I moved to New York City uh, with a bunch of friends, and we were all sort of making a disaster of our lives, both personally and professionally, while trying to, to do the things we, we dreamed about doing. And I like the scene where um, Jason and Ellie first meet in the bar. What are some of the worst or best chat-up lines that you might have encountered, or maybe even used yourself, but you don't have to <laughs> admit to that? <laughs> it's funny, I've been asked that. I don't really have a series of, of, uh, of, of lines that maybe I've used. I mean, maybe... Maybe I should have. Maybe I would be much more effective in my dating life if I did. Um, Imogen told me a good one about um, my eyes match my helicopter, which I um, thought... <laughs> my eyes match my helicopter. Only in New York would that line be a real thing, right? Um, yeah, can you tell us about casting the fantastic British actress um, Imogen Poots, what you particularly admire about her as a performer and why she was right? I love, you know, there's a theory about romantic comedy casting, which I, I think is just don't pick the obvious girl. And... Emmy was really a, uh, an actress that, like, I feel like in real life she would have surprised someone like Zac Efron, right? And she's someone that the more you get to know, the, in, in the, the, the deeper she sort of draws you in. She's alluring in that way. And over the course of the movie, what I wanted was someone that is going to really surprise Zach, where it snuck up on him. And he said, I can see her and other people, and I don't really care about this. And then as soon as he loses her, she is the type of person that you would say, Oh wow, that's the I I really really screwed this up. That is someone that I should have um, been more attentive to. And chemistry is definitely something that you can't engineer. What did you enjoy about seeing Imogen and Zach work together? Um, the fact that like the surprise that they were actually connecting was real. I don't think either of them were really expecting it, but they're both really great people off screen, and I think that really helped. And um, they had this really kind of cool bond where they were really they 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 were. It, really there for each other, and, and that's sort of the theme of the movie. That's yeah. what relationships are. And how about your three male leads? How did that casting come together with Michael B. Miles and, and Zach? Uh, Zach was really the catalyst who came on first, read the script, and said, I want to help you make the movie. Let's, let's, let's do this. And uh, Michael B. and Miles, I just chased. I was familiar with their work. I watched them in interviews, uh, and I, I, I hammered away at them to come meet with me and talk about why it uh, was interesting. And they saw various aspects of their own lives and their own male friendships in it. And that was the thing that, you know, you get an actor like Michael B. Jordan who does primarily dramas to, to, to come to a film like this. The, the Miles Teller, who's doing everything uh, and super transformative in the way he performs, to come be uh, that guy in the film who's required to have a real gear change from super sweet to big and funny and crazy. And how would you describe Zac Efron's <coughs> screen presence, that kind of particular brand of charm that he's got? Can you put your finger on it? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a magnetism. Like, he really holds a frame from the moment he walks on. He's one of those guys, and it's this intangible quality that, that, that holds your attention. And he has that thing where he looks at the camera, at the girl, and says he's sorry, and you can't stop watching him. He really does have that charisma.
And what do you think of um, the choices that he's made since the success of High School Musical, how he's navigated his career and that success? Yeah, it's a tough thing. We've talked about this, actually, and the, the, the thing that makes your career possible um, and makes you sort of a global uh, celebrity is also the thing that um, you're constantly having to get over. Um, people are shocked to know that he's 26, going on 27 years old. They're like, ah, he's 19. No, he's a person who ages. And, uh, you know, he's made fantastic choices, I think. He's, he's worked, aside from me, he's worked with great directors um, and, uh, and, and made choices to stay uh, doing indies because he's able to help them get off the ground and get the financing they need to move forward. So he's really like a supportive, uh, a guy who's supportive of artists and, um, and was really fun to work with. And people will have seen from the trailer for the movie, there's some male nudity in the movie. It's yeah. often the other way around, the, the girls yeah. taking the clothes. Why did you want it to be the men fit for this movie for that awkward moment? Well, that's the thing I wanted to do. Like, it's not the, the classic gender stereotypes that, like, these movies often ascribe to are, um, you know, the girl wants the relationship and she just wants the guy to come in and the guy is, uh, doesn't know what to do and she's always being exploited as just this, this sort of, like, sex object and she's naked and this and that and it's like a fantasy object and I thought we'd just turn the whole thing on its head and say, that girls are often like the guys used to be portrayed, and guys are often like the girls, and they're very, very, very similar, and maybe that's an obvious thing, but it's under, it's totally underrepresented. So I thought, let's have the guys do all the, the nudity, and let's have the guys, like, you know, that's, that's, that's part of life. And, um, and uh, I thought it was very funny. I loved all the conversations um, on the streets of, uh, in, of the city. Right. Why is Manhattan such a perfect location for you as a filmmaker and also for these characters as well in that awkward moment? For me as a filmmaker, I mean, I was living in New York City, working for a lot of different independent film companies, writing like crazy and, and dreaming about making films and to come back and make a movie in those exact neighborhoods. Um, was really sort of a poetic thing for me, it, it, you know, and, and to make a movie that I had written and, and get to direct it right there where I was thinking about it for so long and trying and, and struggling for so long was, was really fantastic. And to make it with these guys, um, you know, the, the city just has this energy. It has an unbelievable quality to it that just makes you want to work harder and be better. And it's a, I always say it's a city of opportunity. Tom Gormkin, thanks very much. Thank you very much for yeah. being here. I really Great appreciate it. Great yeah. to meet you. Thank you. Thanks very much.